So this video show you how to deal with the rational function in general, meaning that we are going to see how to find the vertical asymptote, the horizontal asymptote, the domain, the range, the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and then in the end we are going to find the graph for this rational function. So let's just go ahead and get to work. First off, we see that there's nothing that we can reduce. So this one, I would say, it's nothing that bad, I would <laughs> say. Anyway, go ahead and get to the first one. For the vertical asymptote, we look at the denominator and we make it equal to 0. So we get 8x minus 3, and of course we put it equal to 0. And solve for x, you get x is equal to 3 over 8, and then that is it. So I'll just say x is equal to 3 over 8. Next, we have the horizontal asymptote. So that's to put the f of x as y, and then we have 2x plus 1 over 8x minus 3. And again, we care about this, care about that for the horizontal asymptote, right? The x cancel out, and then 2 over 8, which is just 1 over 4. So that's it y is equal to 1 over 4. Done deal. Cool. Now, for the domain, let's put it down right here. Again, this right here, we cannot reduce anything, so nothing too tricky. Just go ahead and make the bottom not equal to 0. Domain, you have to state the restriction. So you're going to say 8x minus 3 cannot be equal to 0. Well, in that case, we can see that x cannot be equal to 3 over 8. And based on this, we can write our interval notation. If you look at the graph of this real quick, let's say here is 3 over 8. We have an open circle, meaning that x can be any number, but just not this. right? So x can be any number, but just not that. So look at this as the interval notation. We go from negative infinity to this. So let me write that down right here. 3 over 8. And then be sure you use a parentheses because you do not want to include negative. Uh, you do not want to include three over eight. And then union the other part, which is again parentheses. You go from three over eight to infinity. Yeah, that's it. And then you are supposed to write everything in one line, but I cannot fit over there, so that's that. Okay, for the range, this right here, it's not bad, but I would prefer to do that all the way at the end. Now let's look at e. Right, let's look at E. Again, usually do the range at the end because that's the trickiest one. So let's just have that habit for that. For the x-intercept, we are going to make y, which is this, equal 0 and then solve it. So we get 0 is equal to 2x plus 1 over 8x minus 3. But you see, if the fraction is equal to 0, that means the top has to be 0. So we just have to look at 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. And then solve for x right here, we get x is equal to negative 1 over 2. So that's that. And because x intercept is a point, usually I like to write this as negative 1 over 2, comma, 0. And again, this means the x value and this means the y value. This is not the interval notation. All right, for the y-intercept, so let me put that down f. For the y-intercept, we are going to just let x equal 0 and then plug in. Remember, f of x is the y, and then we have 2 times 0, and then plus 1 over 8 times 0, and then minus 3. So we see this is just negative 1 third, right? So that's pretty much the idea why it's equal to negative 1 third here. And again, y intercept is a point, so we'll just write it as 0, comma, negative 1 third. Cool. Lastly, let's look at the graph for this, and to do a sketch of the graph. This is what we are going to do. First off, we have the horizontal, we have the vertical as, the, as 3 over 8. So we are going to just put down a vertical dash line right here as 3 over 8. So let me just say this is 3 over 8, like so. And this is x equals 3 over 8. And we also have the horizontal asymptote at 1 over 4. So let's say this right here is 1 over 4 y equals 1 over 4. Cool. Okay, and we are also going to label the x and y intercept. Negative 1 half comma 0, so let's say it's right here. This is negative 1 half comma 0, and uh, we also have 0 comma negative 1 third. So let's say 0 comma negative 1 third, let's say this right here is negative 1 third. Cool. And technically, we should also be 
checking the sign of the function, meaning that when does the graph go below the x-axis, when does the graph go above the x-axis, and things like that. And after you finish all the graph by your hand, uh, you can just use a graphing calculator to double check and things like that. Let me just tell you guys how things are. If x is less than this, right, negative one half, you get positive. It's actually like this. Just, just follow along. The graph will look like this. Why? Because you see that I know the curve has to touch this and that point, and then when you go all the way to the left, the curve has to become flat and it has to go really close to one over four. And when you have the curve right here, it has to go straight down. And if you pick a number bigger than here, you will see that the curve is actually going to be positive. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's actually going to be above this right here. And again, you can just double check with your graphing calculator. Now, if you look at this, once you have the graph, you see that x cannot be 3 over 8. We say that right here for the domain already. And for the range, you see y can be going from negative infinity to positive infinity except for this number. The curve does not cross this number, namely 1 over 4. So for part d, we have to make sure that y is not equal to 1 over 4. So let's go ahead and go back here and then just say we have to go from negative infinity to 1 over 4 and we will have to put down a union and then we go from 1 over 4 to infinity. So that's that. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I write the interval notation on one line so that looks much better. So that, this is it. Here we are going to investigate this rational function. We are going to find its vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, domain, range, x-intercept, y-intercept, and then in the end, we should have a sketch of the graph. Okay, let's get to work with the vertical asymptote first. Remember to check if we can reduce this or not. On the top, we can factor out a 3. That's good. And then on the bottom, in fact, we can also factor this as x plus 2 times x plus 5, and we see we can actually cancel this and that. So the reduced version is 3 over x plus 5. For the vertical asymptote, let me just put down this right here. We look at the reduced version and then look at the denominator, make it equal 0, and that's pretty much it. So x plus 5, make it equal 0, meaning x is equal to negative 5. Dan dio. First answer right here. Very nice. Now, for the horizontal asymptote, you can look at the reduced version or the original doesn't matter. Let's look at the reduced version. Y is equal to 3 over x plus 5. Well, we see that on the top we just have a number 3. And on the bottom we do have x to the first power. If x goes to infinity, right, 3 over infinity is 0. So remember, whenever you have an x on the bottom right here, that will give you 0. So y is equal to 0. That will be the horizontal asymptote. Done. Next, we are going to find the domain. Remember, remember, remember. For the domain of a rational function, you always look at the original before you reduce anything. Because if the question was written like this, you have to prevent anything that will make the bottom equal 0. So look at that, which we have x squared plus 7x plus 10. Go ahead and make it not equal 0, because we are trying to find the restriction. We can factor this like what we did over there, which is x plus 2 times x plus 5, make it not equal 0, meaning that x cannot be equal to negative 2, x cannot be equal to negative 5. Okay, so these are the two numbers that we cannot use for the x. So, for the domain, let's go ahead and write down interval notation. And a number line might help. Put down negative 5 right here, and then put down negative 2 right here. We cannot have these two numbers, but any other numbers are okay. So the first piece is going to be from negative infinity to negative 5. Do not include that. Union, the other piece is negative 5 to negative 2. And then do not include that. And last piece is negative 2 to infinity. Okay, cool. So that will be what we have. And perhaps let me just fix this a little bit. Cool. 
Now for the range, uh, let's save it until later. And now let's look at the X intercept. So I'm going to put that down right here. For the X intercept, you have to look at the reduced version. You have to look at the reduced version. So if you look at this right here, you make it equal to zero, three over X plus five. Can we make that equal to zero? No, not possible. Because remember, the only chance for us to have a fraction to be zero is when the top is equal to zero, but three is not equal to zero, right? Three is not equal to zero. So this right here is not possible, meaning that we have no x intercept. So I'll just say none. Okay, and now for the y intercept, so this is going to be, wait, this is supposed to be e, and here's f. For the x, in, for the y intercept, we are going to let x equals zero. Earlier it was y equals zero, right? And then we are going to put zero into the. This one doesn't matter. You can put the original, or you can put it here. It doesn't matter. So let's put it here. Y will be three over zero plus five, which is just three over five. Okay, cool. So here we have zero comma three over five. Cool. And now let's take a look at the graph. Okay, be really careful with this. First off, let's label the vertical asymptote, which is at x equals negative five. So I'm just going to put it down right here. X is equal to negative five. And we will also label the horizontal asymptote, which is y is equal to zero. So let's put it down right here. Y is equal to zero. There's no x intercept. So we don't put on any points on the x-axis. And uh, we do have a y-intercept though. So 0 comma 3 over 5. Let's say it's right here. This is 3 over 5. Good. And if you take a look at the graph of this, you will get a picture like this on your graphing calculator. And you might be thinking, that, okay, what's so tricky about this? This is indeed really tricky because we also have to account for the domain. You see the domain says x cannot be negative 2 and x cannot be negative 5. So as you can see, we already know x cannot be equal to negative 5 because we have a vertical asymptote. However, right here it says x cannot be negative 2. So we will actually go to negative 2 that says right here. And you will have to go up and you have to erase that point and you have to put an open circle. And sometimes you will have to know the y value of the open circle. How do we do that? Well, you have to utilize this. Do not plug in negative 2 into the original. Because if you do that, you get 0 over 0 because we have this factor. So for this right here, we know this point. This right here is 3 over 5 because that's the y-intercept. But for this right here, for the open circle, we put negative 2 here, so we get, let me just write that down real quick. We get y is equal to 3 over negative 2 plus 5. And if you take a look, this is going to be 3 on the bottom and uh, 3 over 3, which is just 1. So this right here is at 1. The open circle is at negative 2 comma 1. And now why do we care about this? It's because for the domain. X cannot be negative 2. That means we have this open circle. That tells you Y cannot be 1. So I will come back here. D. Notice from the graph, we have this horizontal asymptote. The graph does not touch that. So Y cannot be 0. And because of the open circle here, Y cannot be 1. So now let's put that into interval notation. So 0, right? So we will just go from negative infinity to 0, and then union 0 to 1, and then union, and then 1 to infinity. Yeah, just like that. So this will be a picture. Your graphing calculator is not going to show you a little open circle, so be really careful with the domain issue. That's it.